most people, when was the last time they were in a high school? It'll be when they were in a high school themselves. Well, going back to a high school, even if it's not the one that you attended yourself, can bring back some very strange memories and give you a pretty unusual feeling when you walk down the hall and see all those lockers and those drinking fountains again. March is Education Month, and we chose to come to Vic High because it's the oldest high school west of the Great Lakes and north of San Francisco, and also because it has a very interesting cross-section of people who attend this school. So let's go and have a look and see what's going on in high schools today. Okay, this much looks pretty familiar. In fact, ever since lockers were invented, this scene of the mad dash from one class to another has taken place in every high school. But what about the people who store a good part of their lives in these lockers? One way to find out if today's students are the same as yesterday's is to ask someone who's been teaching them for 17 years. Yes, uh, they're still the same uh, people. Uh, they really haven't changed. Their uh, needs and desires are the same. I really believe, though, they're better informed and uh, they, they understand what they're being faced with in the world today. And the world today means computers. In fact, Vic High has one of the most up-to-date computer labs in BC, featured in IBM's magazine. Technological change is one of the biggest influences in today's classrooms. Another is social change. But it looks like today's kids are generally calmer than they were in the turbulent 60s and early 70s. Well, they seem to be pretty much the same as they were 24 years ago. Um, in the intervening time, there have been changes, and they seem to have swung back that way. They're more inclined to work than they used to be for a little while. They're uh, good students. They seem to be uh, well-directed in what they want to do. I'm really pleased with the way they're going this year, and the last few years here. So it's been a change over the past few years rather than over 25? Yes. Um, they have uh, sort of swung back from, from what they were to what they were previously rather nice group of people. What about things like uh, discipline and drugs and dress, those kinds of things that we hear so much about? Well, I think a lot of it's um, exaggerated. There, there seems to be no discipline problems in the high school here that I know about. Uh, the drug situation certainly has gone down over the last uh, 10 or 12 to 13 years. Uh, I don't know of any uh, serious drug problem in the high school. I see my generation really getting into, getting more back to our families. We seem to take on the morals and priorities that our grandparents have. That's what I see among my friends and myself. I think that the family's going to come back into play more. I don't think that it's going away because our generation isn't, um, I think we're more well balanced. I think we want a lot, but I think we have the, maybe the opportunity to get a lot. So we seem to be a more family oriented and marriage oriented generation, I think. I see a lot of my friends going that way. Vic High seems like an especially appropriate place for grandparents' values to resurface. In fact, the current principal's grandfather designed this very building. And many of today's students can go up into the huge attic to find their grandparents' initials carved in the walls. And they can see the holes left from the days when this attic was a rifle range. Vic High continues to make history with its practical courses, like the fully equipped auto body shop, the machine shop, where machinery components and aluminum and brass castings are made. And then there are the classes that have been part of high school forever, it seems. But at least they're classes that will help students deal with the one thing almost all are interested in. Kids are interested in jobs and what they're going to do after high school or further education after high school. And I see the biggest change as being with the girls. I think they are becoming more aware that probably they will be working for a better part of their life than, say, girls 10 or 15 years ago. They're more aware of the technological change, the fact that jobs have changed greatly. 10 years ago, our girls all got jobs out of high school if they had some training. Now you need more training than just high school to get some of the better jobs. The jobs just aren't there if you don't have computer awareness, word processing, or further education at the university level. Muriel, what else is it besides jobs that kids might be concerned about today that they wouldn't have been before? Uh, some of the social aspects, um, drugs, uh, there's a lot of pressure on for being accepted by their groups. But I think that's still a very small number of students. I think most of our kids are still very straight, um, wanting to get an education, academically oriented kids. And too much emphasis is placed on the negative we have 99% really good kids. And what are those good kids concerned about? Probably job opportunity. You know, there's a lot of people out there who, who 
who um, who want to who hold jobs but they but they, they can't quite get it together. Mm -hmm. It's motivation. You've got to know how to to get a job. You need people who who can tell you how to make your resume and, and send it around. And, I don't know. I went to I went around to and took my resume to different businesses. But I didn't know that you had to follow it up. And so the next week, I heard that that this business had put a wanted ad in the in the window. But you know the jobs, you know you have to keep going and going and pushing to get your your point across that you want this job. Yeah, they have changed slightly. I think you know in their freedom, the amount of freedom. Uh, they seem to be out an awful lot later sometimes at nights than what we used to be or what the kids used to be in that. They've also changed in the respect that uh, there's a lot of single families now, a lot of kids moving away from home, going out on their own. They seem to find it a little bit easier to get away from um, parents and that instead of staying in the home and, and living by rules and regulations that are put on by their parents. So those things have changed, yes. Do any of those things cause problems at school and problems for teachers? Yes, I think they do in some respects in that the, the kids are um, struggling for money a lot of the times. The ones that have moved out on their own, they are trying to support themselves, so it makes it a little bit harder on them to try and uh, live up to being in school full time. They tend to have to work late at nights and different jobs and that, so yes, it is more difficult at school with those type of children around. Some people say that um, kids today uh, grow up too fast, that they become adults and take on responsibilities that they really shouldn't have at, at a fairly young age. It sounds like maybe you agree with that. I do agree with that, definitely. I feel sorry for some of the kids today and nowadays that by the time they're in grade seven, they're already trying to be young adults or trying to be adults. They don't have a childhood as much as, or I think back in mind, they don't really they aren't children for as long as they used to be. They tend to try and be adults right away. They're in, the girls are into the makeup, they're into the cigarettes, they're into other things, they're into jobs so quickly in their lives. Although I did work after school and, that, and there was nothing wrong with that, but they just tend to never be kids for any length of time. But in spite of all that, kids are still kids. Spring fever still hits just like it did a hundred years ago. And some kids still manage to put off physical education class until they have absolutely no choice. Put all that aside though, and when today's students worry, they worry about work. Take the limit of jobs out there in public, and uh, the government, and how it's cutting back on education, and uh, the way it's generally being run. Which government are you talking about? Um, our social credit government in mm -hmm. BC. You think that uh, people your age talk politics? I think so, yeah. Oh, I would say nuclear disarmament right now is a big factor. A lot of people are really wondering about that. And uh, graduation, of course. <laughs> no, I'm not worried. I think that it's possible to get a job. The thing is to be able to get a job that you're happy with for life. I think it's hard to, to get into areas um, that are exclusive to people who work in those markets for 50 years. And it's hard for us to break into those. So I think that we really need resources to... Um, become educated and skilled to get into those areas. I think that, that anybody can find a job for a minimum wage job and survive, but I think it's going to be harder for people my age to, to be have to create a happy life for ourselves. Getting a job. Well, my friends, we seem to talk a lot about uh, the nuclear arms race and other environmental concerns. Things like that really scare me personally. And I don't see a growing amount of awareness among those I'm associated with day to day here. A lot of them seem to just uh, approach it with a look of apathy. By dismissing it from their minds, it's saying, well, it's not going to happen, but maybe that's true. But the situation being that it is there, they're not controlled in, in whole by humans. There's a lot of computer technology involved. And so that creates a lot of indecision and there is large room for error. So there's among students apathy on one on the one hand and maybe fear on the other? Yeah. Just general apathy. Saying, well, I don't think about that much. It doesn't concern me at this particular time. But it obviously concerns you. Yes, it does. If you're surprised that students spend at least some of their time talking about politics and the arms race, you're not alone. Obviously, there are still discipline problems and kids who get into trouble. But young people feel pretty strongly about those who believe that all they're concerned about is drugs, fashion, and being cool. Well, they're wrong. 
They seriously are. I find that a lot in adults that they seem to feel that uh, teenagers do revolve around those three projections, girls, drugs, and other unmentionables. It's just not true. We do have uh, some degree of intelligence and we're able to see things around us. Now, when you first get into secondary school, yeah, those things are important. You're trying to measure up, you're trying to meet a status quo. But eventually, for myself, I started looking towards other things and uh, almost becoming antisocial in a way because once the, uh, the baubles and bangles of life wear off, what do you have, you know? You've got to start looking towards the future and concerning yourself with what's going on around you. Who knows what the people at Vic High or any other high school will think of their high school years in the future. How do you feel when you look at your picture in your high school yearbook? Times have changed since then. Schools certainly have. The kids have changed too, but maybe less than you think. I was just trying to think what I worried about when I went to high school. It wasn't anything like that. I think I worried about falling in front of a bunch of girls on Saturday <laughs> afternoon skating. That was you about still the worry about that, right? No, I used to. I used to. I was really impressed, and, and hopefully you were as well, by some of the comments of those yeah. students when, when I went to the school and talked with them. You have to keep in mind, though, the ones that we talked to would naturally be articulate and have something to say. Otherwise, they wouldn't talk to us. So you sort of uh, are assured of getting kind of a select group of people, no matter how old they are, when you do something like that, people who are willing to talk and, and not shy, even though they're w in front of a TV camera with the rest of the class doing all their normal things. Mm -hmm. But I was very impressed by the things that they had to say and the way they said them. Well, we can't help but be impressed. They're impressive young students, that's for sure. Well, we went back to high school, as you just saw there, and we got a quick look at what a typical day in Vic High School was. We want to show that to you because it shows a different light on things. It's not all depression and suicide. Here's a quick look at a day in high school.